Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Match Day Vlog. Where it is Bank Holiday Monday, August. We play Belper Town today at home. And we have supporters club meeting before that, hence why I'm going up to the stadium very early today. Sun is currently shining, but looking at the grey clouds in the sky, I don't know for how long. Um, could be another wet one, like it was on Saturday at um, the uh, lovely, wonderful Brickhouse Town game. Uh, for those of you wondering why there was no vlog for the Brickhouse Town game at the weekend, um, a whole combination of things caused me not to do any recording for that day. Um, all stemming basically from the travel, the travel, <laughs> the fact that it took so freaking long to get there because of all the traffic and congestion and road works and everything and like I say I'm not a great traveller. Um, I'm alright just pottering around town doing my own little thing but any journeys out of town I my PTSD and, and anxiety just 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 <laughs> go crazy and being in a car all that time on Saturday just wasn't good for me at all it completely triggered me everything off I didn't feel great when I got to the the ground um, probably explains why I was scoffing sandwiches very very um, greedily <laughs> when we got there because my stomach was in absolute knots and I was trying to untangle everything um, And then, um, then of course, when we, we had to walk the, on the walk to the ground from where we parked, the heavens opened up and it absolutely hammered it down for the beginning of the game, which meant I couldn't do much recording in the rain because I wasn't going to get everything out and get everything wet. Um, and obviously, with the way we played on Saturday, we was very quickly three goals down by the time it had stopped raining so I think at that point I really wasn't all to do in the vlog not much point doing a vlog because the game had gone the time had passed there was no salvaging anything out of that and I didn't want a video where I was just going to be moaning and depressed really <laughs> with the day so I didn't record on Saturday. I'm sorry if you was looking forward to an away day vlog. Um, there will be more in the future, but obviously it's probably gonna be more likely to be a feature done at games that are more local to us, where traveling time is of a minimum, and I can get there and have time to decompress from the journey before, well before the kickoff, and then also hopefully have time after kickoff to do things and decompress and get myself sorted out because um, another thing I didn't particularly like about Saturday was the whole as soon as the final whistle went jumping in the car and starting the journey home it didn't really give me a lot of preparation time that didn't um, I would like to have spent a few minutes or half an hour or an hour after the game just 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 to, just to prepare myself and ready myself but I'm um, you know I'm have to accept that when I am being transported when I am the transported and not the transporter I don't get to dictate these things um, but yeah I'm looking forward to today's game we are going to need to see a obviously a response again from the players and the lads hopefully um, because um, that seems to be the trend at the minute. We have an awful game, and then we have a, a a good game after that. We have a bad game, a good game, a bad game, a good game. And um, so we should, by rights, have a good game today. <laughs> um, it'll also be interesting to see what the team lineup is today as well, because so far, we have shuffled the deck for every match. 
I don't think we've played the same team two games in a row. Um, again, I don't know what people's thoughts and feelings are on that approach to football. I know there's a lot of, a lot of, there was a lot of spectators on Saturday saying need to stick with a with a line up, stick with a starting eleven instead of keep changing the team. Of course. A lot of that depends on availability, doesn't it? Who's available? Who is available? You know, if your players aren't... You can't play the players. If the manager can't pick and play the players he wants to play, he has to go with what he's got. Um, and um, unfortunately for some of us, that's not good enough, <laughs> it seems. Um... For some fans, um, some spectators, I do question sometimes some of the fans. I have to say, they, they, like I say, at the moment it seems like people aren't don't have real, aren't in the real world with their expectations of what we're going to get this season in terms of results and performances. I am very much in the wheelhouse of. I'm happy to take whatever we get. You know, yes. Losing 4-2 on Saturday was not a great result. However, second half performance, a heck of a lot better than the first half performance. We didn't concede any more goals again. We didn't get battered in the second half and absolutely routed like we would have done previous seasons. And the fact that the lads were actually the better team in the second half and could have actually, a few things going the right way, we could have actually got a draw out of it. You know, we could have got a point in the second half from the game, had a couple of chances gone in. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to take, you know, I'm not going to take the approach of some fans that, oh, it's a disaster. Oh, you know, because honestly, I think we're doing, for where we've come from, again, let's be realistic here, folks, with the, with the summer we've had, with everything that's gone on behind the doors of the club with the ownership with the directors and the board and everything we're lucky we've got a club of a team on that pitch to watch and support we really have you know and the people that have stepped up around the club and come in and supported the club with their support you know the sponsors you know Anna big shout out to Anna for doing a fantastic job of bringing in all the sponsorships that have helped us to put a team on that pitch. You know? We've just got to be realistic, folks. You know, we're not going to be top of the table for a long, long time. <laughs> not this year, not next year, not the year after. Okay? We need to accept we are where we are and... Uh, whether you like it or lump it, really. <laughs> so I'm apparently one of the first ones here again. There's a learner driver here. But yeah, today's game against Belper should be good. I'm hoping it's going to be a fun match. Like I say, no idea. At this moment in time, we have no idea who is going to be on the team sheet until the team sheet comes out. Because you just never know what players are available to us, who's available, who's fit. Um, you know, we had the the game the other night against Stocksbridge Park Steels that we won and won very well. Unfortunately, the five new players that we brought in weren't there Saturday against Brig House. Um, I guess that's the issue with dual registration players. If they get the opportunity to play and be in their actual club's squad, they're going to take it rather than come and play for us um, and obviously I think we must have had a couple of injuries I think Elliot Walker was injured he wasn't fit to play Tom Zaboni obviously still injured at the minute, unable to play um, so yeah, it was a um, tough day out for tough day away on Saturday at Brig House a long, long day and a day that I took all of yesterday to recover from. <laughs> um, 
and feel and today I mean I'd still don't, I'm, I'll be honest I still don't feel 100% perfect today I've took some extra meds that I hope will um, help me to get over things but I just have to be a little bit obviously realistic and accept that maybe some of these away matches I need to have a bit of a look on the calendar uh, and look on the the map see where some of these games actually are and maybe some of the further trips the longer trips away I have to just be realistic and say I can't make them it's too much um, Lena Driver doing a parking here in the football club car park on the match day I always thought they used the other car park over by the leisure centre because there's nobody in that one Anyways, ladies and gents, I'm here. I'm going to wait for them to open up so I can go up and get my seat in the um, in the bar, ready for the supporters club meeting. And um, I will speak to you again in a bit, hopefully. Right, let's go. So we just come out. Oh, straight through that door there, mate. Where's the lady? Oh, One season ticket holder there, mate. Yeah, right, mate. Yeah, season ticket. Yeah, cheers, boy. Where did you sneak in from then? Well, I was in the uh, sports club meeting, mate. So I've just come down to do the official bit. Top man. <laughs> For your numbers. See ya. Now we'll go see Gary the gardener. And we'll... One program, please, mate. Thank you. Right, we're going to have a bit of a wander. We'll go down and see uh, Ian at the club shop because I didn't actually record him the other day when I was here. There's uh, Nick. Our lovely, wonderful Grant from Town Sporters Club Shop. Hello, Nick. Hello, Ian. Ian is our lovely, wonderful merchandise seller. Here, he runs the club shop. Available on most match days, all match days at home. He provides a wide variety of stuff, don't you? Uh, yeah, there, there should be a guy just on um, as you come in. He was just there, yeah. Was it little bloke? We missed him. Yeah. Sat down. So yeah, get all your knickknacks, your pin badges, key rings, coasters, mugs, obviously your hats, your caps, your scarves. Nice arrangement of stuff to support the club. New Torsh t-shirt as well back there. So yes, you can find it in here at the matches. Every every home game, he's either down here by the Gingerbread Hut or he's upstairs in the Gingerbread 1874 if the weather's a little bit iffy. <laughs>
So yeah, just having a wander across. The lads are out warming up. Players are talking. Rhino's tucking into his pre-match burger. Ted's here. Good afternoon, Ted. I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I think Curtis will get to wear his own kit today. Do you think Curtis will get to wear his own kit today? <laughs> the one on Saturday didn't suit him. No, no. Didn't fit him either. <laughs> Look on the opposition for today. Belper. Where's our boys? They're not out yet. Yes. Where's the gingerbread man? Where's the gingerbread teddy bear? Really? Still think we need to make um, Riley the official Isaac man on match days, don't we? Stick stick him in the costume. We should make it, it it's the only way he gets in. He puts the suit on or he don't come in. <laughs> <laughs> don't we? Should be his grounds for admission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the yeah, in the sports club, yeah, we were finished speaking when Riley said so. <laughs> Time to move on. <laughs> Here come the boys. At least it, Sam's got room today to do his throw-ins. Two people enjoying the gingerbread hall. Nice to see. They'll probably run out again before half time. Well, they did the other weekend, didn't they? Let's get me ordering early then, like you. <laughs> Don't leave it too late. <laughs> Oh, Brad. Apparently, Harry Woods here. Yeah. 
He's not playing then. He's just spectating, is he? Harry. Hi, Greg. Don't fall down the stairs, Steve. Don't go full claim in, we can't afford to pay out. Here's Harry. Oh, he's playing. Wow. Got some boys back. We're like reforming the Beatles, aren't we? <laughs> That's Graham doing his BBC job. Right. So I think I'll go grab myself something to eat now that the queue's going down. And, um, and then we'll carry on doing a bit of filming once the boys start doing a bit of exercise. Here's Ollie. Mr. Oliver, what is your match prediction today? What do you think? Are we going to win? Are we going to win? I'll let you try after. You can play with it later on, after the match. But are we going to win today, yes or no? Yes. Yes, good boy. Good afternoon. Could I get one gingerbread burger, please? Gingerbread burger, four pound eight, please. Is that a special? Yeah. Special. Uh, lovely, thank you. Thank you. Stuart the burger man. Doing his job. Priceless. Fancy graphics. Hmm? It's no expense fair, yeah. Food allergies and intolerances. Well, we're all intolerant, aren't we? <laughs> we're all an intoler intolerant bunch. Some of us. Thank you. Oh, let's get some brown sauce. I've just seen him. Yeah, just seen Harry Wood. Yeah. Team news, it's in. Team news, a couple of changes after 40 feet. Let's be honest with you, Harry Wood retired, dual registration Stanford. A couple of changes for that 40 defeat. 
Tony Moxon, Cena, Buddy McGregor, Sin. But Harry Wood, the places, it's on the side. It's not that big speed door, red stuff is after. So a couple of changes there, but it's going to be a good game. We'll see you guys down at the 1874 here at Trent Road. Come on, your town! <laughs> Riley with the update there, everybody. Ghost in the room. So the lads are out warming up. Goalkeeper coach putting Curtis for his kicking. Kicking practice. Nice to see all the lads here on time today before the uh, match kicks off. Unlike on a uh, Saturday at Brig House where some of the players were quite late apparently. Especially those that were on the uh, coach with the uh, supporters travelling up. Apparently there was a bit of miscommunication on Saturday. Some of the players were going to be five minutes late for the bus pickup, but didn't tell people where they wanted picking up from. So the bus went to the stadium, came here to pick the players up, but the players were waiting to be collected from Newark, so that cost them half an hour of travelling time. <laughs> you couldn't write it, couldn't script it. If You know, everything was just made to go wrong on Saturday for the um, Brig House game, but hopefully today all the lads are going to be um, up for it. Like I say, it's nice to see some of the, the boys back from the um, Stocksbridge Park Steels game as well. So we've got Bradley Munns back in the team today. We've also, he's also brought his mate Harry Wood from Stamford, who obviously played for us last season. So, yeah. Harry Wood was a very, very good player for us last season until he snapped his hamstring in... December and didn't play again for the rest of the season so be interested to see how he plays for us today really um, he is starting so that could be quite good um, don't really know too much about the Bell Palot at this point in time but I imagine My first impressions of the Belper team is they're not very tall, apart from two lads, not a lot of height there. So um, maybe that could help us from set pieces, getting Greg in, getting Greg involved, obviously. But yeah, get the boys playing and warming up quite well. Obviously, Akil, Rodrigo and Greg there working with uh, assistant manager Steve Kirkham to, uh, obviously we need these boys working well together for our attacking side of play as our front three and then obviously hopefully getting backed up in the middle of the pitch by the likes of Munns, Harry Wood today. Um, I didn't actually. I haven't actually got a team sheet. I haven't. So. Well, here come the uh, Hardy boys. But yeah, sun shining at the moment, which is good for us. Um, 
Obviously Kurt is coming in now. Looks like it's going to be a good crowd here today. Looks like there's a few, fair few people from Belper. Belper supporters in. So I don't know what the official figure will be for half time and what have you, but I'm hoping it'll be good. Um, and I see Ethan Bojang with Harry Wood and Bradley Munzo. That's going to be our midfield boys then today, obviously. Our three in the middle. So, hi up. It's going to be a 4-3-3 then today, I imagine. So, yeah. Doing okay, thank you. Too late now, Dave. No good coming there. Yep. How you been? All right. Didn't want to work today, didn't want to sell his lucky 50-50s. Come on, Tan. Come on, Grantham. Come on, boys. Switch on from first minute today, lads. Come on. Come on, Grantham. Best of luck, Paul. Oh, 
Curtis, get it! Oh! Substitution for Belper, number 15 for number 10. Head up, Brad. Four minutes. Well, matey was injured for quite a while, wasn't he? Come on, Curtis, sling one in there. Nice oh, for matey, he fell on his head. Yeah, I'd. Come on, child. 
Like should I not stop with them? No, shouldn't I? Your name from Stamford? Yeah. Um, oh, you Come on, Tan. I mean. <laughs> We ain't hit the target yet, though. We ain't hit the target yet, though. Their goalie ain't had to make a save or anything. We've just blasted everything high and wide. Danger man there. Oh, look, look, look. Keep it out. Get out of here. That was a gifted chance, that was. He should have put that one away. That That's a miss. That lads was off, didn't it? I don't know, I missed that one. I thought you'd gone in. I thought you'd gone in. I thought you'd gone in. I thought you'd Who have we got extra players today? Chris, who's come in just then? Harry Wood and Bradley Mums. Uh, Harry Wood? Who hmm. was he out then? He, just, he went to Stanford. Did he? Oh. he got badly injured last season. He got injured here, didn't he? Mm. After a long time, and then he went to Stamford and came back in on one. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, same as Mumsy. He's Right, he's got two, he's got two for this, he? Yeah. 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 Half time. <laughs> no, I'm okay. Yeah. So one nil down at half time. Well, like I say, we ain't, we ain't had a shot on target yet. So, yeah, we're not doing great, I would say. Unless we have start having some shots, start testing their keeper. There's all the VIPs. Better second half, come on. Emily, Emily. Hmm? I don't know where your mummy is, I've not seen her. Thank you. 
Well, unfortunately for us, that is a 3-2 defeat at full time after being 2-1 up. only got three. You only got three. Yeah. Oh. That is flat. Because it's full time, match is over. Wait for the players to come off now and then we can go upstairs. Yeah, we can go upstairs and it'll be all round. Hmm? Your turn to get the drinks in, Emily. You're buying. Yeah, I can't read. <laughs> you can't read. That's an easy excuse, that is. <laughs> well, very disappointed in that result. We was doing so well to be 2-1 up, and then... The referees played like half an hour of extra time and let them basically play till they won. Hmm? No, we've lost. Unfortunately, we lost. The referee cheated. Because the referee just decided to keep playing till they won. He was on their side. Yeah. We're on this side. Mm, yeah, all the yellow ones are going to their fans, look. Yeah, come now, boys. Unlucky lads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What can you do, lads? What can you do, lads, when the ref plays until they win, eh? What can you do? Unlucky, boys. Unlucky. Unlucky boys. Unlucky lads. You never know. Never know lads. One day we might get a ref that plays until we win. <laughs> you know. You know. One day. One day. One day. One day we'll get a ref that plays until we win. <laughs> Well, lucky Greg. Should we go upstairs now, Emily? Do you want to go upstairs? Right then, ladies and gentlemen, it is the post end of vloggy vlog. Vlog. Um, I've actually just had to uh, jump start Richard and Anna's car. <laughs> Which is why I'm a little bit late leaving and heading home. I've also got to go and get my dinner on the way home, so we've got a bit of a time to have a chat about what's happened today. Uh, yeah, end result of the match, we lost 3-2. 1-0 uh, down at half-time in a first half that was pretty even Stevens, I felt, from where I was. Uh, we never had a shot on target in the first half, so... We can't grumble about going in with no goals. They took the chance that they were gifted. Again, bit of a defensive error on our part. Long ball, over the top. The thing that we've been so 
was so, you know, put out by all season. Um, so far, the long ball over the top, the defenders not tracking the players, not getting close enough, and the guy gets in the box. And to be fair to the guy, he got a bit of luck because he hit the post and it went in off the post. Um, it could have easily hit the post and come out, you know. One of them goals. But going in 1-0 down at half-time, I didn't feel like we were, you know, out of the game by any means. I felt we were in with a shot, in with a chance. And the second half, again, like we've seen every match this season, the lads come out in the second half and it was like watching a different team. I don't know why, at this point in time, the lads that come out for the second half don't start the game. Why is it that the team that plays the second half for us isn't the team that starts? Because they play so well. They play so well. And I find myself just, just looking at things and thinking, if they just started like that and played the first 45 minutes like that, we'd be all right. Now, what is my order number again? Right, second window, here we go. Sorry, I forgot my number then for a minute. <laughs> But yeah, the team that starts the second half and plays the second half is so much more alert and alive and just plays better than the team that starts the first and starts and plays the first 45. I don't know what that is. Is it a case of the players need to have their bollocking off Paul at half time before they actually start playing? I don't know. Uh, maybe Paul should just give them the bollock in before they go out at the start of the game. But yeah, we got back to 2 1 and we scored a great goal from um, uh, a corner. And again, put the ball away quite nicely. Akil Francis. And then Rodrigo. Brilliant, brilliant play from Bradley Munns. Picked up the ball in our half, hit the ball forward, the keeper come out, come out of his area. Good evening. How Good evening. We? There's a drink there for you then. Thank you. Any sauces for you? Uh, some barbecue please would be nice. Give me two seconds. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So yeah, um, Bradley pinged the ball forward from inside the rail. I read it brilliantly. Keeper was come out of the area, obviously, to deal with it. But unfortunately for the keeper, Rodrigo beat him to the ball. Rodrigo knocked the ball, ball past the keeper, went round him, and just literally was able to dribble the ball into an empty net. Um, so that put us 2-1 two, up, 2-1 two, ahead. And honestly, at that time, we was absolutely bossing the game. We was in charge. And we'd, we'd you know, not had any issues, not had any, I don't think they, up to that point, they'd, they'd threatened us in the second half. And obviously, at that point in time as well, we're looking at the clock thinking, there's not a lot of men, there's not many minutes left. You know, there's not a lot of time left in this game. Um, we just got to hang on, hang on now for a nice 2-1 victory. But of course, our lads kept going forward. And Bradley Munns, in all fairness to Bradley Munns, he should have got a penalty. Because, again, he tried to play a ball into the box uh, from just outside the area. And the defender blocked it with his hand. Um, okay, okay, some people said, oh no, it, it hit him in the side of the neck. But at the end of the day, his hand was up in an unnatural position. We've seen that given time and time again in the Premiership. As soon as a player puts his arm, raises his arm into an unnatural position, I'm afraid to say, you lose the benefit of the doubt. You lose the benefit of the doubt. So we should have had a penalty there. That's penalty one that the referee declined us. And then he had the nerve to book 
Bradley Munns for appealing for the fucking handball. But then a few minutes later, again we've 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 gone through on goal. Uh, we've played a ball across the box. Um, Rodrigo's picked it up. Okay, in fairness to Belper, Rodrigo's taking the ball away from goal. He's dribbling towards the edge of the box. He's not going towards the goal. He's going away from goal. But still, the defender blatantly tripped him. The defender tripped him. Okay? The line out has just froze. He's not prepared to make stick his neck out and make a decision. It's falling on the referee, and the referee, again, he's just not giving us anything. All game long, all night long, all afternoon long, he's not, he's not interested in giving us anything. Bad referee, you know. Time and time again we see it at this level, but today, oh, it just feels so bad. Especially when, after the game, you've got all the Belper players telling you in the clubhouse, after the game... It was a definite penalty. Stonewall penalty. I took your man's legs out. I took your I took I took the took the guy's legs out. I tripped him. Stonewall penalty. Don't know why the referee ain't giving you. You know? Absolute fucking oh. So 2-1 should have possibly been 4-1 had we got both penalties. Because Greg would have put them away, let's be fair. Greg would have put the penalties away. We would have been 4 1 up. But we're at like 2 1. We're into what is stoppage time. And the linesman signalled three minutes. The linesman signalled three minutes to the benches. But then the referee's come over and he's had a word. And the next minute, the board's gone up seven minutes added time and we're like where's he got that from where's he got seven minutes from but you know as is often the case our lads play 90 minutes we don't use substitutes because unfortunately the players on our bench are not very good no disrespect but I think the, the general feeling and consensus is our best players are the 11 on the pitch, so unless there's an injury, like in the case of Harry Wood, did a slight groin strain, we're not going to make substitutes. And, um, yeah, so our best players have played 90 plus minutes and then have been told, oh, you've got another seven minutes to go yet, yeah, lads. And then they're like, they're like, they're knackered, they're on the chin straps. Belper start throwing everything at us. The second goal, the equaliser comes from a situation where, again, we've had a set piece. The ball's been cleared first off. It's come to a guy 25, 30 yards out. We've not followed the ball out of the area. We've given him time on the ball. We've given him time. He's been able to look up, pick where he wants to put the ball. He's supplied the cross. They've got a guy on the far post. He puts it in. 2-2. Two, two. You think, ah, oh, flip. You know, that's unlucky. You know, that's, you know, that's bad luck. Blow the whistle. We take the point, you know. Unfortunately, no. Not with the referee today. The referee today seen then at that point in time to decide I'm going to play as much time now as is needed for Belper to get a winner. <sighs> and that's what ultimately ended up happening. Belper made substitutions. They brought on fresh legs throughout the game. Our boys tired. You know, we've played Saturday played again today monday they've only had like less than 48 hours to rest and recover um and ultimately we've been done we've been done in again ball came in set piece the first time 
first time, probably first time or maybe only the second time in a game, one of their centre halves drifted beyond our goalposts, behind our defenders, and was basically unmarked at the back. Ball fell to him. He was able to put it across into the net. You know, all match long, their, their two big lads had been level with the goalposts or inside the goalposts. The two times that those players went sort of outside the goalposts and were left unchecked, we conceded the goals. And that's what's ultimately done us tonight, unfortunately. And it feels so bad. It does feel bad, I have to say. It feels bad. Coming away from this weekend with no points. You know, before the weekend, on the way up to Brig House on Saturday, I said I would have loved to have come away from this weekend with four points. I would love to have beaten Brig House and I would love to have got a point today against Belper. Because Belper are going to be at the top of the table come the end of the season. Them and Hepburn are going to be up there. Okay? They're going to be fighting for promotion. That's cut and dry. But the fact was that today, for the best part, the best part of 90 minutes, we were better than them. You know, we were 2-1. We'd matched them. We'd overcome them. We were in front of them. And then we've been undone by the officials again. Or the official. And like I was saying um, in, in, in the clubhouse after talking to a few people, it seems like as well that maybe, maybe, just maybe, we got one of them officials today that basically said to his assistants... Don't you flag for anything. I'm in charge. It's not your job to flag. You know, I'll tell you what's happening. Because the, the certainly the lino on my side, on the main stand side, he seemed very reluctant. He was literally waiting for the... He seemed like he was waiting for the referee to tell him which way to give a throw or, a, you know, whether it was a goal kick or a corner or what. He didn't look like he was making the decisions out there. And that's bad. That is bad. Because the referee is not in the best position all the time to give things, you know. If he's 30, 40 yards away and the players are stood three or four feet in front of the lino and the ball goes out of play and the lino doesn't know, doesn't flag, doesn't signal, to me that's poor. And I don't believe in that. I think the I don't think referees should have the ability to tell linesmen, you don't flag for anything. I, I, I tell you. No. <laughs> That's the whole point of having the assistants. Is they're there to help the referee referee the game correctly. Okay? And apply the rules correctly. If the referee is like handcuffing the linesman, what's the point in the linesman being there? But, you know, I feel sorry for the lads. I feel sorry for the players today. Because obviously they've took a lot of they've took a lot of stick after Saturday's game. Took a lot of stick. And you know, for the way in that the manner of that defeat, the 4-0 at half time. They came out in the second half, obviously redeemed themselves a little bit by getting the two goals. Um and being the better team in the second half. They've turned up today. And, you know, they've played well. The lads have played well today. They deserve something from that match. They deserve something from that game. Even if it was a point, you know. Just a point. They deserve that. To play that well. And come away with nothing. I could, you know, this this is exactly why I could never do this job. I could never be a pro footballer or a manager or a coach or anything like that because I wouldn't be able to handle that. <laughs> I would not be able to handle that. I'd get I'd get bloody banned for storming into the officials' dressing room after the game and smacking the fucking referees' lights out. I would. <laughs> 
Um, because it's just, it just doesn't seem fair that those lads, those young lads, they've gone out there today, they've played, they've worked hard, they've played for 90 plus minutes, and they've been robbed. They've been robbed. I mean, literally, the referee might have been wearing, might as well have been wearing a striped fucking shirt and a mask, because he's robbed us. He really has. You know, and that's no disrespect to Belper, you know, no disrespect to Belper, because Belper themselves admitted, you know, their players and their staff admitted we had beaten them. You know, if we'd got the penalties, if we'd been given the penalty decisions, the correct decisions, they wouldn't have beaten us. But that's football, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately. So, a weekend, a bank holiday weekend, with two games in 48 hours, and we've got no points. Nil poor. We've got a home game now coming up on Saturday against the bottom of the league team. Hopefully, we get something from that. Hopefully, this result absolutely fires the players up now. Pisses them off. And they want to go out and fucking prove some prove a point now. You know, let's not, you know, we're not going to be given anything. It's quite clear now from the games that we've seen. We're not going to be given anything. We're not going to get any gifts. We're going to have to go out there and fucking take every fucking point we want, we, we need. So let's go get the result on Saturday. And then, obviously, then after that, We've got the away game. We've got cup games coming up. We've got the FA Trophy game coming up. We've got the County Cup game coming up. <sighs> Let's just hope. Let's just hope we can, you know, again, for the young lads, the young players in the team, let's let's learn from this. You know, this is an experience. This is like work experience now for these players. Learning on the job. For the experienced guys like your Greg's, and that, you know, they've been there, done it, seen it all. They already know what we're up against. I think now it's starting to maybe just be noticed by some of the players that they're just they're not you know, you gotta make you gotta you gotta take you're not gonna be given anything, you know? Let's face it, the officials we're not going to be given anything when we go anywhere on the road, when we're on the travels, on our away days, as again we saw this Saturday at Brick House with the lino that was running the line nearest the stand. Uh, but, I mean, he was just an absolute joker. I mean, the Grantham fans gave him enough shit and abuse in the first half for his bad decisions and his bad management of the game and everything and then I got to see it in the second half that the Belper fans the not the Belper the Brig House fans should I say were giving him abuse for making he was just crap the lino was just crap shouldn't be a lino you know didn't fucking oh, so frustrating you know it's like where do these guys get their fucking badges from where do these guys get how do they get appointed half the time you know? <laughs> but oh, it, it's horrible to think now. I've done, I don't, you know, what's this? Vlog six? Vlog five? Vlog six? Vlog seven? Oh, I start to lose count because August has been a long month. <laughs> August has been a long month. There's been a lot of football in August. Uh, we've played a lot of games already. You know, we're over like one fifth. We've played what, like one fifth of the season. We've played like one fifth of the season by the end of this month, ladies and gents. Um, that's a lot. We've played a lot, and it feels like every single get vlog I've mentioned the officials so far. I've mentioned, and I shouldn't have to mention the officials. You know, if we're mentioning the officials. As I said, I think I said in my foot in one of my blogs, or maybe it was one of my football manager videos. The best officials in any sport 
are the ones you don't notice. If you are constantly noticing and being distracted by the officials, they're doing something wrong. That's my view. And it feels like in these vlogs, I have definitely mentioned the officials too many times. For what is the first month of the season. Um, I feel like... Um, we have, we need to see better, basically. I know at this level, you know, people are always going to say, oh, it's the level you're at. Um, it's the level you're at. Well, I beg to differ on that. I do. I beg to differ. Because officials should be held to the same standard regardless of what level you're at. Whether you're Premier League or you're some Sunday League. You know, the rules of football don't change depending what level you're at. So why should the officials have different standards? You know, we had, a, like say, the official today, I mean, for like 70 minutes... I was convinced he hadn't brought his fucking yellow cards with him. Because he never book, he never produced his book. Never cautioned anyone. And we're like, what's going on, ref? And then it all just goes completely Pete Tong. And like I say, it honestly felt like after the equaliser, after the 2-2, two -two, instead of just blowing them and saying, right, you know what, lads? You know what? Everybody, both teams have played well today. You can both have a point. No, for whatever reason, whatever reason, the referee decided, I'm going to keep playing till that team gets a winner. Because literally, after they put the ball in the net, he blew for full time. Didn't give us a chance then. Didn't give us a chance to try and get an equaliser. Did he? No, of course not. Why would he? Um, yeah. Such a shame. Because like I say, all the lads played well today. And, you know, Harry Wood, Bradley Munns, the two low knees from Stamford, played really well for us today. Really gave us something. Especially Harry Wood. I was really impressed with some of Harry Wood's stuff today. Shame he got injured and had to go off. Again... Maybe if that hadn't have happened, would we have hung on to 2-1? Possibly. Who knows? But it's just one of them, it's just those things. It's just just crazy annoying football as a fan to sit there and have to suffer that. Because like I say, honestly, can't pick a fault with the players today. All the staff, the staff. I felt, you know, Paul and Steve, both of them were all, all gang, giving the players, laying, sticking it into the players, shouting at the players, encouraging the players, motivating, you know. They were, they were on it today as well. And I just feel like we've been, we've been robbed. We've come away from this bank, August bank holiday weekend with nothing. And I feel like we deserve something. You know, like I said, four points before the weekend, I would have snapped your hand off. I would have took it. If you'd offered it me, I would have said, yeah, I'd happily take three points from Brig House. I'll take a point at Belper on Monday. Job done. To come away from both those games with no points doesn't seem right, doesn't seem fair, doesn't seem just. So, yeah, it's going to hurt for a couple of days, definitely. But then, Saturday is just four days away. <laughs> if we go again on Saturday, the fixtures come like clockwork. Fixtures come thick and fast, you know? So, we don't have much time to feel sorry for ourselves. We've got to go again. And go again we will on Saturday. And if we play on Saturday like we did today, we'll win. We'll beat the team that's bottom of the table. Definitely. We'll beat them. We'll take three points. And then hopefully we go on 
win the next game. Win the next game. Especially with the County Cup, Spalding game coming up, and then with the um, FA Trophy game coming up. Definitely need to win those. Having already exited the FA Cup, we need the Cup runs. And certainly County Cup, as defending champions, we, we will not accept defeat in that competition from anyone. We are going to defend our trophy. And then, obviously, hopefully give the FA Trophy a good run. Get a little bit of prize money. And see how things go. And just, just keep grinding in the league, I suppose. Put the uh, disappointments behind us. And try again next week. I mean, the good thing is, amazingly, amazingly... Having lost two games this weekend, we are still 15th in the table. We've not actually lost places. We've not gone down. We've not gone up. we stayed exactly where we are, despite the fact we've lost two matches. Because of how other results have gone on around us. So, not the worst case scenario. But, obviously, we need to do better. We need to do better. So there it, there it is, ladies and gents. That's vlog. Vlog day. Match day. I need to go out, go and eat my dinner. And, um, yeah, I need to get the, all this stuff uploaded to the cloud. And then I need to download it, get it edited, get it rendered, and get it uploaded to YouTube so you guys can watch it. So that is what I'm going to do, ladies and gents. So, for me, see you, Waddy. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Here we go.